Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us on Fox43.com and the Fox43 YouTube page. We are once again doing our 2022 this time mock draft. Uh, last year, you might recall, Kale Ahern, our webmaster guru, myself, did our picks. Uh, Kale, I think, had more correct, which is why I'm back doing it this year again and being joined by the newest member of the Fox 43 sports team, our very own Evan Brooks. And Evan, we're going to jump right into it, but I got to tell you, looking at all these mock drafts, looking at the players, I don't know if I can recall a more out of nowhere draft. Nobody seems to know where anybody's going or, you know, last year you at least had an idea on the first four or five. It seems all over the place this year. No, you're absolutely right. That's a great point. I mean, this is as wide open as a draft has been since I've been watching the NFL draft. So it's definitely a, a lot of options, a lot of needs for different teams, and it's going to be fun to see where everybody ends up getting picked. All right. Well, let's uh, jump right into it. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars back with the number one pick this year. And uh, this time I have them going on the other side of the ball. They got Trevor Lawrence last year. Um, right now, Aiden Hutchinson, defensive end out of Michigan. As close to a sure thing as I have seen so far in this year's draft, uh, by all accounts, just plug him in and watch him go right now. Uh, Jacksonville obviously needs that player on uh, that side of the ball. And, um, you know, they're coming off a drama-filled 2021 season for sure, both on the field and off the field. But, uh, you know, let him and Josh Allen pretty much terrorize backfields in the NFL. That was my logic. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I had him going one as well, like you mentioned, um, you know, just plug and play guy, high motor, high upside, um, kind of really the safest pick in the, in the draft. We saw what he did last year. Um, you know, against everybody, not even just in the Big Ten, but, you know, everybody he played against. Um, and like you said, you know, him and Josh Allen should be a formidable duo on the edge for, for years to come. You know, he's probably the only only pick that most people feel comfortable with, um, you know, making that number one. They tag Cam Robinson as well, so that kind of takes off the line, off the board, um, you know, in terms of what, what I was thinking. So, yeah, no, couldn't agree more. Aiden, Hutch Aiden Hutchinson is the pick all right, why don't you take us to uh, to pick number two here? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, the Detroit Lions uh, back here picking again. I have them going with Trayvon Walker from Georgia. I know this pick can go many different ways. I've heard Kayvon Thibodeau, Sauce Gardner, even Willis a little bit. Um, you know, if they want to go quarterback. But I'm just going to go with a high upside defensive end. I mean, we saw it last year with the Ravens. Uh, Odafe Owe, a guy who didn't have too much production in the Big Ten, but his traits were outstanding. Trayvon Walker, I mean, by all accounts, he has no go gadget arms. I mean, he can lock out offensive linemen from a ways away. Super high motor, super high upside, and I think he's the type of guy that can't really love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. you know, and there's even a lot of talk about Aaron Walker potentially go number one. It seems like he's the name that we're, we're hearing a lot of right now, but uh. Yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of Georgia defensive players coming off the board, and I think he is the first of, of many in this one. Um, you know, a lot of depth at Georgia. You can really say, you know, Walker really didn't get to shine, and, that, and that's what's going to happen when you have that many impact players on one side of the ball. But, uh, you know, I think he's going to be a defensive lock for, for the Detroit Lions for, for years to come here. Um, and that takes us to the Houston Texans, which I'll be honest with you, they can pretty much draft anything, and I would not be shocked. Um, but uh, I'm going with a Ekem Ekwanu, uh, North Carolina State, the offensive tackle and or guard, which is one of those things. Versatility on the offensive line. You love to see that. NFL coaches love to see that. Um, O-line, it's never sexy in the top 10, but it's always a need. And, and I think, you know, Houston, I don't think their quarterback is in this draft. I think they're going to wait for next year. So why not just get a guy on the line, get him established, get him going. And, uh, you know, you can kind of pair him up and, you know, somebody who will ultimately be one of the more feared linemen in the NFL as he was nicknamed the most feared offensive lineman in the ACC this past year. Yeah, we're three for three, man. I have, I have them going Iki Kwanu as well. I mean, you kind of mentioned it. I mean, if you want to be honest, like even Davis Mills, you could argue he was the second best rookie quarterback behind Mac Jones. That offensive line was just completely decimated and to be honest, 
not not that great. Um, so I think they come in, get a cornerstone like the Iaquano, like you said, plug them in guard, tackle wherever you want to play them. Um, loaded nastiest lineman <laughs> in the ACC. I mean, you can't have anything more. And um, you know, we know Casario is very used to working with, with physical guys, being coming from Patriots and working with Bill Belichick. Who loves football players? He could care less about the measurables and all that. He wants big, mean, nasty. Players. So that that seems like a, a very logical direction for the Texans to go. Um, moving on to number four, the New York Jets. Um, I will have them taking Oregon edge rusher Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, we know Robert Sala loves his defensive linemen. Um, they lost uh, Carl Lawson last year with that ACL injury. Uh, we've seen the work, like I mentioned, Sala's done with guys like Solomon Thomas and guys like that um, and they quite frankly that's that's what they need obviously two picks in the top 10 um, for them and to get a high upside guy like Kayvon Thibodeau I mean there's been a little bit of questions around his his motor I think that's a little bit overblown I mean he was the most dominant player in the Pac-12 and, and he was the surefire number one pick all season long before you know the, the season got played but I just think to bring in a guy like that and to be a, a guy like Robert Sala who D-line is his calling for that couldn't ask for a better kid. At some point, we're going to diverge here, but it's not here because I've got Kayvon Thibodeau going to the Jets as well. Uh, yeah, he can adjust his game quickly. There is still some room for improvement with him, but uh, he's quick off the snap. And, you know, you look at all those things, but I was looking at what the Jets did last year. 32nd in average yards allowed per game in 2021. 32nd in points allowed per game. 29 in rushing yards allowed per game. They need somebody up front to cause some kind of chaos, and I think he is the guy to do it. We will stay in the New York, New Jersey area as we take a look at the Giants at number five. I'm thinking maybe this is where we divert here because I'm going offensive line, Alabama, Evan Neal. Uh, Neal is an NFL coach's dream. Six foot seven, 337 pounds. Can play the tackle or the guard. Um, you know, a lot of the top linemen in the draft, I think Neil is seen as one of, if not the, him and Ekam were both like back and forth here. Um, but you know, the Crimson Tide lineman, he may have opted out of doing some of the drills at the combine, but you know, he's been playing the past few years in the SEC. That tape is going to speak for itself. We're still on the same page, man. I got them going, I got them going Evan Neal as well. I mean, the Giants had one of the worst offensive lines. This is a big year for the quarterback, Daniel Jones. It's, uh, everything we've heard in the offseason is they want to protect him, you know, see what he has, give him his last shot. And, you know, if he's running for his life back there, it's going to be hard to show it. So definitely get him a blindside protector. We've seen Andrew Thomas step up last season as well. So you can run him, um, you know, Evan on the right side and, you know, just let him go from there. Like you said, coming from Alabama, you already know what you're getting a polished player who, who knows how to play and as a professional. So. Yeah, man, we're still on the same page uh, with that Neal at number five. Um, moving on to number six. This is where I think we might be very uh, The Carolina Panthers, uh, a lot of talk for them. I have them going better than Willis. Um, I just think he has the highest upside in the draft in terms of quarterbacks. Obviously, this quarterback draft is going to down, but I just think he has the, the biggest upside. Um, you know, Matt Rule has had up and down tenure so far. Um, Quarterbacks haven't really worked. Maybe trade for Sam Darnold. That didn't work out. I think that Cam Newton, that wasn't great. So I just think they reach for the stars here, take a guy with a huge, huge upside, huge, huge arm, has the biggest arm in the draft, I would say, and you know, is, uh, has weapons around him as well. Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, guys like that. So he's stepping into a pretty nice situation. Um, so I'm going to go quarterback when we do this for I'm not sure there is a pick in this draft that is more important than this one is to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, as you mentioned, Matt Rule is on the hot seat, if not the hottest seat in the NFL. Uh, I do have them going quarterback, but I do have them going with Pittsburgh's Kenny Pickett. Um, you know, and I'd love to say it's something much more complicated, but you know, Pickett committed to Rule when he was the coach at Temple. Temple here, Rule then went to Baylor, and then Pickett then went to Pittsburgh, and now we know how that one ended. Um, I, I think that those two are just going to come together, and they kind of wait for, you know, the Panthers need answers, and they need a franchise quarterback, and I don't think 
from rules perspective, you can wait until next year's draft. Um, I agree with you. I think your guys got the, the, the bigger upside. I think that the Panthers kind of need something right right now, and I think that's why that was my logic going with Pickett. Yeah, no, that's that, that's a great point, excellent point, especially with you know him committing the rule um, while he was in high school. So I, I could definitely see that as well. And from there, we're going to go to the New York Giants at number seven. And uh, for this one, uh, man, I, I came so close to getting this guy at number two, uh, Ahmad Sauce Gardner, cornerback out of Cincinnati. Um, and, and Detroit style pizza is the sauce on top. It was so hard to get a guy nicknamed Sauce and not have him go there. But um, I, I think he's a steal at number seven for the Giants. I really do. Four, four, one, forty. I mean, he didn't allow any touchdowns in coverage during his college playing career. Uh, I don't know what else you could ask for. And obviously, any defensive back is a need for the Giants. Yeah, I had, I had Sauce Gardner as well going seven. Um, I, I think about it like this. They got Wink Martindale coming over from the Ravens as their defensive coordinator. We know he loves press coverage, big, tall man corners, obviously working with guys like Marcus Peters um, and Marlon Humphrey on the other side while he was in Baltimore. And Sauce Gardner's right up their alley in terms of, you know, measurables and length. You mentioned that he has he didn't allow a touchdown the entire season, which is ridiculous. No matter who you play against or anything like that, I just think his upside is is really, really high and can really be an uh, Antonio Camardi type guy shut down. Uh, moving on to number eight, the Atlanta Falcons. They go in a bunch of different directions um but i got them going garrett wilson wide receiver from ohio state i mean the receivers right now Mackius, um, you know, they really only have kyle pitts who's gonna throw to him he's only in his second year i know quarterback may be an option here but i just think that they need a weapon on the side obviously calvin really suspended for the entire year um unfortunately for him but i just think they need somebody to throw to garrett wilson's the best wide receiver in this draft to me Reminds me a lot of Stefan Diggs, the way he gets open and body control. And I think he'd be a fantastic pick for the today. I wanted to go Malik Willis right here so bad, but just because of the Cal, honestly, my, my list was the pros and cons. And because yeah. of that Calvin Ridley suspension, I've got them going Garrett Wilson, wide receiver at Ohio State. Uh, you know, Matt Ryan heads out of town, Marcus Mariota takes over. You need a clear number one here, and he can't be dumping it off the pits every single time. Uh, I agree with you that Wilson is the best wideout in this draft, uh, and I think that's why ultimately they're going that. Even if Marcus Mariota, and chances are he is not their long-term guy back there, this guy has the ability to be a long-term wide receiver for them. And from there, we're going to head on to number nine, the Seattle Seahawks. And Jermaine Johnson, Edge from Florida State. Um, Seattle is going to be a big wild card, I think, on draft night. Uh, you know, do they try and address the quarterback situation? Do they want to maybe bring in a Baker Mayfield? They have a lot of questions that they need answers. Um, Johnson is your ACC Defensive Player of the Year, which says something when you consider the struggle that Florida State has had over the past few seasons, including last year. Uh, he can still get bigger for them. Um, but I think he is one of, if not the top edge rusher in this draft. No, that's an excellent pick. He's been rising up draft boards left and right. I mean, just with his his motor and his high upside, as you mentioned. I have them going. Uh, LSU cornerback Derek Sting here. You know, they lost DJ Reed. You know, obviously, you know, it was a big loss for them. We know Pete Carroll loves the secondary. Obviously, it's been a, a few years since the Legion of Boom, but I just think a guy like Sting, when he's locked in, he's too talented to pass up here and as we all know you know corner is a premium position you need them out there in the nfc west like guys Debo samuel Cooper Cup, Alvin robinson joining the rams deandre hopkins with the with, with the uh with the uh cardinals so it's just a lot of options and, and you know if you don't have corners in that division it'll be tough to game. so i got um moving on to number 10 the second jets pick uh of the draft i got them going Wide receiver, Drake London, USC. Um, I think that Zach Wilson needs some help. Obviously, Elijah Moore flashed brilliantly last last, last year. Um, I have Corey Davis, who, you know, is hit or miss and struggles with injury. 
guys. I just think bringing in a big body like Drake London to really give Jack Wilson some options uh, out there on the perimeter would be, you know, big time for him. Obviously, he's only in his second year, and, you know, that's kind of where most QBs see their jump. But, you know, to, to have a guy like Drake, Drake London opposite of uh, Corey Davis and Elijah Moore, I don't think he could ask for that. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, actually. Drake London, wide receiver, USC. You know, the Jets took a big swing at getting Tyreek Hill. So it's clear they, they want a weapon for Wilson. Uh, obviously missed out on him and missed out on somebody to a division. Um, you know, you want a big target. I mean, six foot five, How is, is that big enough? I, Wilson can hit that, I'm imagining. Uh, but yeah, he gives them some serious, much needed help at that position. And from there, I'm going to go to the Washington Commanders at number 11, the very first Washington Commanders draft pick. Uh, and I think the run on wide receivers continues here. Uh, I'm going to go with Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. And I don't know if this is because I follow you on Twitter and you've been hyping him up for, I don't know, the past week, maybe month. But, um, you know, Scary Terry, they're going to get a contract done. He's going to get paid, but you need another target. You brought in Carson Wentz. He can throw to spots, and we know that, but I think this is a guy who can help stretch the field. He's got that speed ability, um, can also go up and get it if he really needs to. Love his hands in this one, um, but uh, that's that's where I'm going with Washington. How about you? Yeah, that's an excellent pick. Uh, I've seriously considered him here. Uh, at 11. I really, really did. I love Chris Olave. He's one of my favorite players in the draft. But I just, I, I couldn't pass on this guy. I'm going Kyle Hamilton safety from Notre Dame. A lot of people think he might be the best player in the draft. Obviously, we know about his physical uh, presence out there. 6'4". Obviously, didn't run great uh, with his 40 at the combine and pro day, but I don't care about that. The kid is a baller. He plays super fast. His instincts are crazy. You know Ron loves position flexibility and especially losing one of Collins and that Buffalo nickel. It's time for him to play right now. And he can be your one high safety. I really did consider Chris Olave here. I love him so, so much. And I do agree with everything you said about screen kills. I just think Kyle Hamilton is too good. Um, moving on to the Vikings at number 12. Uh, for them, it's all about defense, man. I'm going to go cornerback Trent McDuffie out of Washington. Uh, their secondary needs a lot of work. Cam Dantzler has been okay. We obviously know about Jeff Brandy. I uh, had his struggles and, and ended up getting released. But uh, I just think that they need somebody in the secondary, man. I mean, their secondary was not great, to say the least, last year. Um, obviously, it would be great to get Derek Stingley here. But I think Trent McDuffie is going to mix up for He's coming from a Washington pedigree. You know about their uh, defensive backs, um, with guys like Marcus Peters and Byron Murphy, guys like that. So I just think uh, Trent McDuff can step in from day one and you know, shut down for them. Uh, and I know we're going to be different here because you already have this guy going elsewhere, but I do have Derek Stingley Jr. going to Minnesota, LSU cornerback. Uh, Daniel Hunter, Patrick Peterson, LSU guys do very well at Minnesota. But um, Peterson isn't getting any younger. Uh, and Stingley Jr.'s best tape, it is from his true freshman season, but you know, there's been, there, there's a support system in Minnesota for him already. Um, and sometimes it is about that fit. And I just think that Stingley Jr., he can be that shutdown corner for years in Minnesota. And uh, from there, I'm heading back to H-Town for the Texans second pick in the first round, Jordan Davis, Offensive lineman out of Georgia. Uh, if Houston goes offensive line early in the first, I think then this is the time to buff up that D line. Uh, the Texans have an immediate need up front. Uh, you know, Jordan Davis out of Georgia can be that immediate starter for them. Uh, a lot of people compared him to, to Vince Wilfork, and you talked earlier about that New England connection in the Houston front office. I think. That comparison, the way he's built, the way he plays, it's it's too much for them to pass up on. Yeah, no, that's an excellent pick. That's an excellent pick, and I think he could very well be there. Um, I'm going to go stick with the defensive line as well. I'm going to take the guy you took a little bit earlier. Uh, I'm going to go Jermaine Johnson here. Um, we mentioned him a little bit. Just his, his motor, his athleticism, obviously transferred from Georgia to Florida State, and then he came on this past season. And you know, he is that five-star recruit and lived up to what he was uh, heralded to be in high school. I think 
you know, like you said, buff up that defensive line and to have a guy like him on the edge, uh, us Icky Okwano, that's where they go at three. I think we couldn't ask for a better first two uh, picks for the Texans. Um, moving on, going to Baltimore, to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I have them going offensive line here. I will have them take Charles Cross out of Mississippi State. They had a plethora of injuries last year, not just on, off of the, on the offensive line, but just the entire team really, really uh, you know, kind of sat into the season. Uh, still in the thick of things with Pittsburgh, but couldn't get it done. Um, Protect Lamar Jackson, man. Um, that's that's the name of the game here. I didn't see really anybody else in terms of, you know, defensive line here that kind of beats a guy like Cross who you can plug and play right away. Um, so that's my reasoning. Hey, uh, I'm going Trent McDuffie, cornerback out of Washington. Uh, yeah, McDuffie just screams Baltimore. It, he really does. He's tough. He's hard nosed. He's a physical player, uh, and those just—it seems like hard to come by these days uh, at that position. Um, he can play outside. He can play in the slots. Uh, Everybody is raving about his football IQ, um, and he's as versatile as you're going to find at this position in this draft class. Uh, and you mentioned it—you know, Humphrey Peters both returning from season-ending injuries. So I think McDuffie adds a lot of depth there and, and can be the future back there. And from Baltimore, we are heading to Philadelphia at number 15. Uh, and here I've got them going for a wide receiver for the third straight year in the first round. I'm thinking Jamison Williams, wide receiver out of Alabama. Um, you know, Devontae Smith, I mean, looks like the real deal, the future of the league. Jalen Rager, look, I'd say that Eagles fans are sour on him, and I say that's putting it pretty politely. Um, I think Williams would have been the top wide receiver in this year's draft if he didn't get injured in the championship game in Paris ACL. Uh, so if they can wait a little bit on him to, to get comfortable, get back to 100%, I think it's a big payoff for Philly, and I think it's a big payoff for Jalen Hurts. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I also have them going wide receiver, but as a guy who took a little bit earlier, Chris Olave out of Ohio State. You mentioned it. Kind of said it perfectly. Um, Baker's been a massive disappointment. Um, but Devontae Smith is one of the only receivers who gave Patrick Sertan last year uh, a fit. Um, and Patrick Sertan, by all accounts, was, could have been an all-pro corner uh, as a rookie. So Devontae Smith is definitely the real deal. You know, this is a huge year for Jalen Hurts. Um, you know, a lot of people are iffy on him. And if you can surround him with another weapon, um, like Chris Olave, who we know is a pristine route runner, has great hands, even good in contested catches, contested catch situations. Um, I think it'll go a long way for him. Uh, moving on, number 16 to the Saints. I'm going to take a guy you just took. I'm going to go wide receiver for them, and I'll go Jameson Williams. Um, they just need talent. Point blank on, on the board. Obviously, you know, Hurts, um, you know, he struggled with injuries the past couple of years, and guys like Quez and, and Traquan Smith are there, but, you know, you can upgrade from there. He seemed to be willing to give Jameis Winston this next year. He showed some promise before he got hurt as well, and I just think I'm ready for wide receiver. Uh, with Jameson Williams, who you mentioned might be the first receiver taken, I think they could uh, take him and find a spot for him very easily. Okay, um, there I'm going offensive line, a guy you already have drafted, Charles Cross out of Mississippi State. Uh, I think the Saints are still trying to figure out what they're going to do with quarterback at some point, but I think Cross brings uh, stellar pass blocking. Uh, he can be plugged in instantly and can be a key cog up for, the, um, for them up front for years to come. I think he's great value at 16 if he's there. As you mentioned he's, he's one of those guys that people have on the top of their board. Um, and especially New Orleans lost a lot of linemen last year to injury. So I think Cross is he's fresh, he's new, bring him in and let him be a staple there for a few years. And uh, I'm gonna continue my uh, my offensive line stretch here at 17 with the Los Angeles Chargers, Trevor Penning, offensive tackle out of Northern Iowa. Uh, coaches love a main streak in an offensive lineman. And uh, this guy certainly has it. Um, he is ready to play immediately. And the Chargers have a young franchise quarterback to protect. Um, AFC West did not get any easier this offseason. And, uh, well, they let their quarterback, be, Justin Herbert, be sacked 32 times in 2020. 
and an improvement last year because he was only sacked 31 times in 2021. Uh, he needs protection. Bring this guy in. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great pick. And, and you mentioned the, the sack numbers for Justin Herbert. I have them going opposite side of the ball. Um, defensive lineman Jordan Davis. I mean, you saw it uh, in that game against the Ra Ra Raiders. Excuse me. They were just putrid against the run. And really putrid against the run all year. I mean, I like Jordan Davis, who's a mountain of a man to plug holes and just swallow up running backs. When anybody tries to run up the middle, I think we'll go a long way to improving that run defense, which was by far the worst part of the team. Uh, moving on back to the Eagles, uh, their second pick in the first round. I have them going, this probably won't happen, but I do have them taking a linebacker, Devin Lloyd out of Utah. Um, we know about his sideline to sideline speed. He's obviously a great athlete. Uh, we know how he doesn't invest too much in linebackers, but I just think this guy is, is phenomenal. I really think he can have a Fred Warner type impact early and, and for the Eagles to have that guy who is rangy, who can cover tackle and hit, I just think it'd be a big upgrade for that defense. I'm right there with you. Um, I've got him going, Devin Lloyd, linebacker out of Utah. Now, I think he's a complete linebacker. Uh, he can do it all. Eagles already brought in Hassan Reddick this offseason, so it's an upgrade at linebacker. I think if you bring in Lloyd, who can pretty much line up anywhere, that would give Philly's defense a completely different vibe heading into the 2022 season. So I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, now, as far as back to the Saints at number 19, I've got George Karloftis, edge out of Purdue. Um, he would really complement the Saints' defensive push and their rotation really well. Um, impressive burst off the snap, 11 and a half sacks for or 11 and a half tackles for loss for the Boilermakers in the Big Ten, which I think is a pretty good offensive line conference. Uh, so you know what he's going up against. Um, you know, whether he's got a hand on the ground or he's just standing up, I think he makes the give the Saints some kind of new identity in this post Sean Payton area that already has a pretty solid defensive front. Yeah, no, that's excellent. I think I have them going on the offensive side of the ball. Um, a guy you just took, Trevor Penning. Um, you mentioned it, his streak, obviously. Down in the senior ball showed out really, really well against higher levels of competition. Um, you know, him coming from Northern Iowa. Um, you know, that was a big question for him, but you know, he held up pretty well. and. And that's a team that needs an offensive line boost, and, and he's the best on the board right now. So Trevor Pitting would, I think, help be a great, um, you know, pick to 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 move on from this Sean Payton era. Uh, moving on to the Steelers, a lot of options for them. I have them staying pretty local and taking quarterback Kenny Pickett out of Pittsburgh. Um, we know what Trubisky can be. We've seen him a lot. Maybe they think they can fix him. I don't know if they can, but I think. This guy can come in with Kenny Pickett. He's mature. He knows how to play. Um, he's in a pro-style system. He can make all the throws. Doesn't have an A-plus arm like Malik Willis, like we talked about a little bit earlier, but he has plenty enough arm to, to get the ball there. And I think, um, you know, Deontay Johnson will be a little bit happy not to just run shallow crosses and slants the whole game you know, with a guy like Kenny Pickett. And, you know, they've obviously seen plenty of them. He's right in their building all the time, so Kenny Pickett. I got the Steelers going quarterback as well, but I've got them going with Cincinnati's Desmond Ritter. Ooh. Yeah. And granted, I could be buying into the Steelers smoke screen on this one, um, but I don't think there's a team in this draft that has done their homework on the quarterback position like the Steelers have, because they have just been whining and dining pretty much everybody. They have been studying everybody. Um, yeah, they signed Mitch Trubisky. I don't know if he's the long-term answer. I think it's it's worth a shot. He's a placeholder at this point. If he wants to win it and can win it, good for him. Um, but when you look at what Matt Canada wants to do on offense, I think Ritter just fits what he wants to do better. Um, the team's commented on how much they really loved his decision-making in college. Um, and with Trubisky on the depth chart, you don't necessarily need him to come right in. You know, he can kind of work his way and, and mature behind Trubisky if he wants to. But, uh, yeah, I've got them going Desmond Ritter uh, at 20. Um, and from there, we are heading to the New England Patriots. And this is a guy that, you know, I'm going through my draft board. And I'm like, if he doesn't go here, there's going to be a little bit of a slide for him unless somebody just goes best player available. Um, and I kind of couldn't believe that I still had him available because you had him going much, much earlier. Uh, but I've got Kyle Hamilton safety out of Notre Dame going here. Um, like I said, ultimately, it would be a miracle if he is available at 21. 
Uh, he's a playmaker, played multiple positions, and you know that versatility is textbook for Bill Belichick. Um, you know, he's getting dinged for his 40 time. And that's, that's the biggest thing I'm seeing. I, I see some questions about agility, but he is a solid all around player and a steal if available when new England is on the clock here at 21. Absolutely. That's a perfect New England Patriots pick, especially if he's available there. Um, for me, I have them going wide receiver, Traylon Burks out of Arkansas, um, another guy who slipped a little bit due to his 40 time, but he is a yards after catch monster. I mean, if you got a lot of manufactured touches in college, uh, screens and, and bubbles and things like that, but he ran by guys too. Um, you know, so that 40 time, not too indicative of his play speed, but I think they need weapons around Mac Jones. Mac Jones, obviously, you know, you could argue was the best rookie quarterback kind of by far, to be honest with you. And, you know, he's throwing the guys like Kendrick Bourne and uh, Nelson Aguilar. So to get a Traylon Burks in there, a guy with super, super high upside, has to work on his route running for sure. Uh, probably do have to manufacture those touches and grow him as an overall wide receiver. But I think he'd be a guy that the Patriots could take, bring into the program, and hopefully develop uh, to be a pretty good wide receiver. Um, moving on to the Packers, uh, Green Bay, obviously we know they lost a bunch of receivers. So I have them going receiver as well. Uh, the Penn State Nittany Lion, Jahan Dotson, I have been picking uh, right here. I mean, we've seen him, you know, just explode in the Big Ten. Obviously, he's got the speed. He's got the hands. Daniel Jeremiah said he has the best hands in the draft that he's watched. Runs very good routes, super fast. Um, I just think he'd be the perfect pick uh, for the Packers here. Nobody can replace Devontae Adams. He's the best receiver in the draft. But Jahan, D- Jahan Dotson is a good start to, to getting back on that track and rebuilding the weapon. I'm a pick behind you on pretty much everything right now, but uh, Trailer Burks, wide receiver out of Arkansas. Um, if, if Green Bay does not go wide receiver here, I'll be more shocked than Aaron Rodgers is. I promise you. Uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned Devontae Adams. You know, he's counting his money in Las Vegas right now. Um, you know, they need somebody to throw to. And you, you mentioned yards after catch. I think he averaged close to 10 yards after catch. So, you know, he can make things happen. And that's going to work out well when Aaron Rodgers is like making random things happen out of nowhere in the backfield. And this guy will be wide open down there somewhere. Uh, I just think this is too good of a combo to not make happen. Um, But at 23 for the Arizona Cardinals, uh, that's what I have Jahan Dotson, Penn State wide receiver going. Uh, Unless you've been living under a rock lately, you know, uh, Kyler Murray's not exactly the happiest camper out there in the desert right now. Um, wide out Christian Kirk has left town. Um, DeAndre Hopkins for the first time is really coming off a season pro or an injury prone season. Um, and, and everybody in the key state knows how good Jahan Dotson's hands are. Uh, I think they may be, if, if they're not the best, they're one of the best in this draft. Um, he can adjust to make any catch he wants. Um, has a history in the slot uh, and, you know, he's fast enough to be a contributor. He's one of those people you just kind of mentioned with Burks. You can look at the 40 time at the combines and the pro days, but his game speed is faster than what he's going to do in any drill. Yeah, no, that's, that's so spot on. <laughs> spot on. That's all I can say. I have the Cardinals going center Tyler Linderbaum here. Um, this guy is by all accounts, the, might be the best lineman in the draft, to be honest with you, in terms of his versatility. He can play center, can play guard. A little bit undersized, but we know Kyler Murray loves to run around back there. I think just having him in a clean pocket with a guy like Linderbaum, who is super versatile and super athletic, um, you know, will be able to, um, you know, keep him clean. I was thinking about wide receiver as well. I didn't feel comfortable about any of the options left on the board this late, so I think they can wait in round two to do that, but I think Tyler Linderbaum a great pick for them. Uh, let's go to Jerry World. Dallas Cowboys up on the clock, 24th pick. Um, I have them going. Offensive lineman Tyler Smith. Uh, we know their offensive line has been decimated with injuries lately. Lost Lael Collins, obviously, to the Bengals. They're getting a little bit up there in age and, and wearing down just a tad bit. Um, I think he comes in and, and gives them a presence that they haven't had uh, in a minute. I think he can be, you know, I think he has the upside, excuse me, to be better than than Leal Collins was, and we know, you know, how much of a stud he is, um, you know, 
they could obviously go a different a bunch of different directions. Wide receiver is another option that they they might be looking at. They brought a lot in, but I think uh, Tyler Smith would be a great get. Uh, I'm also going offensive line for for Dallas. Uh, I'm going Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M. I like Zion Johnson here a little bit more in this situation. That I think Dallas will have seen Green play more in the Lone Star State. Um, Green played four different positions his senior year. Um, Dallas needs to protect Dak and Zeke, who, let's face it, they're not spring chickens anymore. You know, yeah. their prime is running out here. So protect them now. Get the get Green in here, and then you know try and keep it rolling because they're competitive in in the NFC East. So I, I think this is a, a big move for them. Um, to there, we are going to 25 for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I've got them going cornerback out of Clemson, Andrew Booth Jr. Um, look, Buffalo is one of those few teams where you look at the roster and it's like there's no real big holes they need to immediately address. Um, Levi Wallace left with free agency. Uh, you know, he headed for Pittsburgh. Um, I think if you're going to try Tredavious White, pair him up with somebody, I think booth is going to work out well there uh he, he does have some learning to do uh and i think given the roster that buffalo has that'll allow him to do that um but again he's one of those guys who can play inside can play out um but can also be an impact player on special teams to get his feet wet to get going yeah it's excellent i have the same andrew booth jr <laughs> going to the bills uh, at 25 so we're in locks up there i mean you kind of mentioned Everything about him definitely has some learning to do, but his tools are just ridiculous. And we know how loaded the AFC is with quarterbacks. Obviously, the Bills have been a Super Bowl contender for a couple of years and will be again this year. Got to stop these quarterbacks, man. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Russell Wilson coming over, um, you know, Devontae Adams joining the, the fold in the AFC as well. You know, you're going to have to play those teams when you can stop them. So to have Andrew Booth um, on the opposite uh, end – Davis White on the other would be a fantastic pick. Uh, to the Titans, uh, a lot of different directions for them. Kind of there, you mentioned, you talked about teams where the draft might shift. This might be another one right here because they could really go a plethora of ways. I have them taking uh, edge out of Purdue. George Karloff is here. Um, I just think you can never have enough edges in the NFL, man. It's always hard to, you know, find guys who can rush the passer effectively. You mentioned the sack numbers and the tackle for loss numbers that he's had. You know, Bud Dupree has injury issues as well. They have Harold Landry on the other side. Um, so I think, you know, George Karloftis can come in, make an immediate impact, and he seems like a guy that Mike Rabel would be all in for. Okay, for here, I'm going Zion Johnson, offensive lineman out of Boston College. I think he's another one of those guys that just strap on the pads and he'll be ready for week one. Um, he allowed no pressures last season at Boston College. Um, he's going to fit into that Titans run happy offense. Um, you know, he, he's got that wide frame. So I'm thinking more of a guard, something inside. Um, and then you look, you got to factor in Derek Henry is now 28 years old. And I don't know if there's a running back in the league that has as much mileage as he does. He's coming off an injury this past year. So, you know, you want to be able to maximize him for as long as you can. I think bulking up the offensive line is going to help you there. Um, from there, we are going to number 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who all of a sudden were in the market for quarterback and now are not. So uh, I've got them replacing somebody who actually did leave the team. And Dominican Sue is a free agent. Um, look, the offense is going to get the headlines in Tampa Bay, but that defensive front has really anchored that team over the past few seasons. Here, I've got them going Devontae Wyatt, defensive tackle out of Georgia. Uh, I think he could slide right in there. You put him right next to Vita Vea and just let him go. Yeah, no, that's an excellent pick. I, I seriously considered him there as well. And, and you mentioned, you know, how he can step in and play from day one. I have them going secondary here. Uh, cornerback Tyre Elam out of Florida. Um, obviously, you know, not too far down the road. So they've got a good look at him. Their secondary was decimated last year. I mean, they had to bring in guys like Richard Sherman off the street and really just didn't to, to compete. So I think bringing in a guy like Tyre Elam, who can play opposite of Carlton Davis, who they signed to that big extension, um, can can help shore up that secondary in the NFC, and, and they can be uh, contenders once once again with obviously the go Tom Brady coming back. Uh, on the number twenty eight, the Packers' second pick, um, I have them going linebacker Nicobe Dean here. 
Um, they re-signed Devondre Campbell, was obviously great for them last year. But I think to pair Dean and Campbell uh, together would be a formidable linebacker core for, for years to come. We know the size concerns with Dean, but uh, like kind of like I was saying with Kyle Hamilton, his instincts and his game speed are a different level. I mean, in the championship game, he was all over the field. And I think to have a guy like that for, for the Packers uh, with Devondre Campbell, like I was saying, to have those two speed guys just – covering sideline to sideline and matching up with running back in the backfield, um, I think would be a perfect pick for them at 28. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go double dip in here on the wide receivers. Uh, I, I think, yeah, I, I think uh, Christian Watson, wide receiver out of North Dakota State, uh, six foot four, uh, four, three, six, 40. Um, you know, I think Aaron Rodgers is essentially drooling somewhere in Wisconsin. He's a different type of wide out than what they have had there. And I think, you know, the more you can mix it up, the better it's going to be for their offense. Um, and, and right now, I think Rodgers can obviously utilize that speed because he can get separation. Um, and I don't think it's lost on Green Bay that the next two picks go to Kansas City. And you know they're going to be in the market for a wide receiver at some point in the first two days of the draft. Yeah, Absolutely. And from there, we're going to head to the Chiefs at number 29. Uh, they're going back to back here. As I said, um, this is where I have Kair Elam going, cornerback out of Florida. Um, you know, you hear a lot of people throw the term NFL pedigree around, but it, it makes a difference. These guys know what it takes. They grew up in it with their family. Both his dad and his uncle played in the NFL. Uh, you know, he was a part time starter as a true freshman in the SEC. So I can't even imagine what kind of talent that ultimately takes, but he thrives in man coverage. He's got the speed to back it up. Um, and it certainly doesn't hurt when you think about who are the wideouts in that chiefs division. Yeah, no, that's, that's an excellent pick. He can definitely step in from day one to play. I also have them going defensive back, um, but I'm going Daxton Hill from Michigan. Well, this is a guy we talk about versatility. He may be the second most versatile safety behind Kyle Hamilton um, played the star position at Michigan. Uh, which is kind of a rover linebacker type uh, hybrid role, but he can match up with really anybody. I mean, he ran a great 40, uh, super athletic, help. They need help on the back end with Tyron Matthew leaving as well. Uh, they got Justin Reed over from the Texans uh, to help in the secondary, but they had a guy like Daxton Hill who can be a versatile chess piece for them to match up with so many different, uh, you know, receivers and, and backs. I think that's uh, great for them to add on their back end. Um, moving on to 30 Chiefs again. Uh, I, this is where I have them taking a wide receiver, and I have them taking a guy who may or may not may or may not uh, go in the first round, but uh, I'm going to take him anyway. I have them take a wide receiver, John Ritchie from Alabama. We know about his ACL injury, uh, unfortunately. I also think this is a guy, if he didn't have that, he would also be firmly in the first round conversation. But when you talk about versatile wide receivers, uh, this guy is it. I mean, contested catch situations, uh, runs pretty good routes, uh, pretty – he's, he's not a small guy either, pretty pretty decent size for them. And to just, you know, add another weapon for Patrick Mahomes, obviously the loss of Tyreek Hill hurts, but uh, to add a guy like that and have the best play card in the NFL, Andy Reid, uh, paired with him, I think he can get the ball and do some damage. Okay. Uh, as much as they need a wide receiver, I actually have them going edge here. Uh, I'm thinking Penn State's Arnold Ebicady, uh, the Temple transfer, really shined for the Nittany Lions last year, nine and a half sacks for Boone White. Uh, the Chiefs' defensive push for sack production, fourth worst in the league last year. Uh, and I think we really saw that in the postseason, too. So, as, you know, there were some slow spurts for their offense early on, but I think ultimately they need to get that push, they need to get that rush going. And I think Ebicady can really help here. Um, you know, pair of picks in each of the first three rounds. So I think at some point they'll get their wide receiver. Uh, I just got them going edge here. Um, from there, speaking of what did we learn from the playoffs, uh, Cincinnati Bengals, uh, they need offensive line help. So I've got them going Tyler Litterbaum out of uh, Iowa here. Um, you know, Litterbaum is, look, he's an offensive lineman from Iowa. It, it, he has taken on some big guys in his time. And really, all I should have to say is that Joe Burrow's two years in the league, he's been sacked a total of 83 times. If you saw the Bengals playoff run, you know that he was always on the move trying to make things happen. And while it can be exciting, 
that's not going to extend the life of your quarterback in the NFL. So that's why I've got them going Linderbaum here. No, that's a perfect pick. As, as you mentioned, they, they need offensive line help bad. Um, I wanted to go online, didn't feel comfortable about anybody's having fun secondary, which also needs some work. Uh, I got them taking the second Washington quarterback, uh, Tyler Gordon um, from Washington, played opposite Trey McDuffie uh, last year and really came on late in the season in the Pac-12. And, you know, he was a guy who was kind of under the radar during the year, but really, you know, made some big plays uh, against some pretty good wide receivers. Um, you know, guys like Drake London and, and guys from Oregon. Um, so I think they can really shore up that secondary. Eli Apple struggled in the playoffs uh, a little bit. And, and we know, you know, offensive line and, and secondary are other big needs. So to add a guy like Tyler Gordon, who's, come, who's coming in and ready to play day one, and it's been a huge rise in this process, I think would be uh, perfect for them. And for our final pick of the draft, uh, number 32, back to the Detroit Lions. Obviously got this pick from the uh, Matthew Stafford trade last year. I do have them selecting a quarterback, and it is quarterback Matt Corral out of Ole Miss. I actually think Matt Corral is going to end up being the best quarterback in this draft, personally. I just love his quick release. Obviously, made that Lane Kiffin offense, so has a little bit of a learning curve in terms of the NFL, but he can make all the throws. As I mentioned, super quick release. Love his toughness. Love his toughness. Obviously, played in the full game. Unfortunately, got hurt, which he didn't have to do. But I just think this is a guy, if he can get some coaching and with that quick release and arm, different arm angles and can make public throws, I think the Lions might have a suitable uh, quarterback going forward. Okay. And uh, look, I, I, the Lions need safety help. Um, I've got them going. Daxton Hill, safety out of Michigan. Um, you know, he's somebody, he could be a quarterback or a safety, honestly, in this league. And, you know, he's got the potential to be whatever they need him to be. Um, you, know, you can line him up opposite of Amani or Warrie if you want to, and then that'll be a formidable secondary already. Um, but, you know, versatility goes quickly in the NFL draft, and I, I think this is the reason why uh, he doesn't make it out of the first round. So what, uh, what, what's the big one big trigger you, did, you wanted to pull, but you could not pull in the first round? I think it was Zion Johnson. I wanted to find a way to get him in there somewhere. I just thought that there were different needs for different guys. And I, as we talked about at the beginning of this, um, you know, this draft is so wide open. I really think teams aren't going to reach. I think they're going to more so draft for, for need. And I just think that there were a couple other needs that other teams had where I couldn't slide him in there. I really, really wanted to get him in there. How about you? Honestly, I had Malik Wallace going like the three different teams in my first round. I really did. And, you know, I just, I went for immediate need over the potential of what could have been. Cause I mean, I, I think out of all the, like you mentioned upside wise, I, I think he, he's got the best potential. He's got, I think he's got the best arm. Um, but I just, I went with fit overall on that one, yeah. but um, you know, we'll, we'll be certainly watching the NFL draft this year and, you know, probably watching all three days. So we're, uh, we're, we're excited here, but um, you know, be sure to comment, let us know what you guys think in the, the YouTube section, um, you know, on, on social media, we're, we're curious who you guys have. And uh, you know, we'll be talking to some of our uh, locked on podcast colleagues. We, we talked with the commander, we'll be talking with the Steelers, Ravens, uh, the Eagles, just to see, to get, to get their perspective for people who live and breathe those teams day in and day out. So be sure to look for those on the Fox 43 YouTube page, as well as social media and, of course, Fox43.com. So for Evan Brooks, I'm Alex Colley. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. And uh, we'll see who comes out on top here and uh, just enjoy the draft.